Hello everyone. In dentistry, there is this one material which has become super popular in a short span of time, and that is zirconia, right? So this video is all about zirconia restorations. Everything mentioned here is based on evidence and research. This topic will be covered in two parts. The first part is more about the advantages, disadvantages, the different types, material properties. In the second part, we shall focus on the cementation versus bonding protocol of zirconia. First, I would like to clarify a very common misconception: Is zirconia a metal or a metal-free restoration? So, what we have to understand is there is a difference in zirconium and zirconia. So, zirconia is a metal, and what we use in dentistry is zirconium oxide, often referred to as zirconia. Zirconium and zirconia are distinctly different in terms of their crystal structure, stability, density, hardness, strength, toughness. Every ceramic has a crystal structure containing both metallic and non-metallic atoms, but the combination is never referred to as a metal, nor does it behave as a metal. So, to conclude, zirconia, like many ceramic, contains metal atom, but it is not a metal. Now you should know that there are different types of zirconia crowns. So talk to your dental technician and see what are the different types available with them. It is necessary that we know the difference because each type has a different set of indications. So one is a monolithic or solid zirconia, and then we have the veneered or the layered restorations. These are basically the crowns which have an inner zirconia coating and a porcelain layer on top. Among the monolithic option, you have the translucent and high translucent zirconia. Now, I have already stressed that it is important for us to know the difference. But why exactly? The clinical choice between one or the other can depend on several factors that include strength and aesthetics, and whenever restoring the anterior or posterior segments. So you can use the regular solid zirconia in the posterior teeth or in patients with bruxism or with minimal occlusive clearance because it has greater strength. But the aesthetic properties aren't so great, so avoid using them in anterior restorations. You can also use it in cases of discoloration, as these are generally opaque and mask. The discoloration, but try to limit them in the posteriors. Also, these conventional monolithic zirconias have been used for long-span bridges successfully. For anteriors, you can go for veneered zirconia or high translucent zirconia. Veneer are the layered ones since they have two layers. It needs more reduction, but they have good aesthetics, so it can be given in uh, both posteriors as well as anteriors. But as long as you have sufficient clearance, it can also be used to mask discolorations as the inner zirconia. coping can be opaque now coming to the translucent or the high translucent zirconia these are newer generation of monolithic zirconia crowns now they present as a high translucency material that precludes the use of a veneering layer due to improved optical characteristics these have excellent aesthetics they are more conservative than definitely the veneered ones and have better strength than glass ceramics They are great for anterior restorations, but they have lower strength and fracture toughness. So this option is particularly important in cases of anterior crowns and veneers. They can also be used in posteriors. In cases of bridges or multiple units, limit it to only three units, as it has less strength and uh, is more susceptible to fracture. Zirconia has become popular for a reason, right? There are numerous advantages to it. The first being biocompatibility. It is because of its biocompatibility that it has gained immense popularity. Also, fewer bacteria adhere to the zirconia surface. Because of these reasons, you will find the soft tissues around zirconia crown to be quite healthy. It is less invasive. Zirconia restorations, especially the monolithic options, require lesser amount of tooth reduction, uh, preserving more tooth structure and improving the resistance form of the tooth. No allergic reactions have been reported to zirconia crowns. Therefore, it can be given in patients with known metal allergies. No black line or discoloration of gingiva. It is something which is usually seen in the PFM or the metal ceramic crowns. Another advantage of zirconia crowns is that they have great aesthetics, especially the translucent and the high translucent one, and even the veneered ones. Also, they are metal-free and therefore have better light reflection properties, which improves their aesthetic quality. They can also be used to mask discolored teeth. It has superior strength, 
A very big advantage is that the zirconia restorations can be cemented conventionally or if the case dictates, it can even be bonded to the tooth. They are also wear friendly. During the early 2000s, zirconia was perceived to be a material that would cause high wear to the opposing dentition. But today, multiple studies have shown how zirconia can be a material that can be gentle to the opposing dentition. Let us take a look at the disadvantages now. Continuing where we left off from, the wear properties of zirconia. Although it has been proved that zirconia is wear friendly and it is gentle to the opposing dentition, the key is to make sure that you have a polished zirconia. If it is not polished, it can abrade the natural teeth. Glazed zirconia, on the other hand, significantly increases the wear of the opposing enamel compared with the polished zirconia. So it is necessary that the articulating surface opposing enamel should be polished zirconia. And even if you want to give a glaze restoration, make sure that the zirconia underneath the glaze layer is polished because the glaze layer has a tendency to wear off over time. One more point to remember here is that if you adjust the zirconia crown, make sure that you polish it again or send it back to the lab and get it polished. If you cement the crown without polishing, it will definitely lead to abrasion of the opposing dentition. The second disadvantage or rather a limitation is that the translucent or the high translucent zirconia have to be avoided in long span bridges as there are chances of fracture. A very important factor to consider when you're giving a zirconia bridge is a connector height. The connector is a critical factor for the whole restoration and it should not be less than 7 to 9 mm square for a regular 3 unit zirconia bridge. In case the bridge has 4 units, it must be between 9 to 16 mm square. Also, the connector dimensions vary depending on the type of zirconia material that you're using. So in case of translucent or high translucent material, a connector dimension for a 3 unit bridge should be at least 12 mm square. If it is not possible for you to have sufficient connected dimensions, your zirconia bridge will definitely fracture. So this is something that you have to watch out for before you even start the preparation. So these were some of the drawbacks or limitations of zirconia. Now that we are done with the basic understanding of the material and knowing why zirconia restorations are so much in demand, I'm going to delve a little bit into the material properties. Knowledge about the materials that we use in routine practice helps us make a better decision and give a better outcome to the patient. So we have already discussed about the translucent, high translucent and the regular zirconia, right? So what makes it different? First, we need to understand that zirconia is found in many phases, monoclinic, tetragonal and cubic phase. Up to 1170 degrees Celsius, zirconia is monoclinic. Then it converts to tetragonal until the temperature reaches 2370 degrees. Zirconia is cubic at this temperature until the melting point of 2680 degrees Celsius. These zirconia phase transformations are reversed on cooling and accompanied by volume expansions. The volume expansion caused by cubic to tetragonal to monoclinic transformation induces large stresses and these stresses cause zirconia to crack open upon cooling from high temperatures. To prevent this, additives to zirconia such as calcium oxide, magnesium oxide, cerium oxide, yttrium oxide are utilized in dentistry, usually yttria tetragonal zirconia polycrystals or YTZP is generally used. The addition of yttria stabilizes the transformation of the crystalline structure under conditions of increased temperature and it also improves the physical properties of zirconia. Now, depending on the amount of the stabilizer added, the properties of zirconia changes. It affects the strength, fracture toughness, and the optical properties such as translucency. Essentially, the more yttria that is added to zirconia, the more translucent it becomes, but also weaker and less fracture resistant. Current zirconia can be classified into three groups based on the yttria content. The first group is strong but opaque. When 3 mole percent yttria is added, 
a hundred percent tetragonal phase is achieved at room temperature. It is called 3YTZP. This is the regular zirconia that we were talking about earlier, which is a great option for posteriors because of its high strength, but not so great aesthetics. When approximately 5 mole percent yttria is added, a structure of 50% tetragonal and 50% cubic phase, known as cubic or high translucent zirconia, is produced at room temperature. These high translucent zirconia typically offer a lower fracture toughness that is comparable to lithium disilicate. However, the aesthetics of lithium disilicate is still better as compared to this high translucent zirconia. When the powders of these two types are mixed, 4YTZP is produced, giving a microstructure of 75% tetragonal and 25% cubic. This is translucent zirconia, which offers ideal level of strength, fracture toughness and translucency, especially when compared to many of the high translucent zirconias. Because of the presence of these polymorphic phases in zirconia, it leads to a phenomenon known as phase transformation toughening. When a crack is introduced in a zirconia restoration, the tetragonal crystals around the crack change to monoclinic. The monoclinic phase has a greater volume. So as the particles convert to the monoclinic, because of the greater volume or greater expansion of the monoclinic crystals, it compresses the crack and closes it. This results in stronger ceramic structure. Moving on, now, preparation guidelines for these three different types of zirconia crowns also vary slightly. Now, 3YTZP zirconia, the occlusal reduction can be 1 to 1.5 mm, the axial reduction can be 0.8 to 1 mm, the gingival margin can be heavy chamfer of at least 0.6 to 0.8 mm. Translucent and high translucent zirconia restorative material, that is the 4YTZP or the 5YTZP materials, the occlusal or the incisal reduction ranges from 1.5 to 2 mm. When it comes to anteriors, in fact, the more incisal reduction you do, you give the technician more freedom to improve translucency. Additionally, the connector dimension for bridges vary from 12 mm square for high translucent and translucent materials compared to the 7 to 9 mm square for 3YTZP or the regular zirconia materials. I hope you have understood all this. I know it could be a little complicated. If you have any doubts, please don't hesitate to mention them in the comment section below. With this, I come to an end. Before you go, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. And also remember to watch the second part of the video in which we will discuss the cementation and the bonding protocol of zirconia.